Well, hey, welcome to another episode of Diamond Dialogue, the uh, chat realm interview show that I do with members of the chat realm, as it would seem. I'm joined by Captain Jack 913 this time. How you doing, man? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing pretty good, apart from the crazy audio and video issues that we've been having trying to get this stupid thing set up. But we're going now, so we're going to do it live. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's get right in with the questioning. Uh, who the hell are you, and how did you get here? Uh, my name is Tom, and that last name is pronounced DJ Vittorio, but you don't need to know that. <laughs> Tom or Tom D is good. Um, I'm originally from the Boston area, but I'm living in Chicago right now. Um, I got here through a combination of Tech TV, Revision 3, CNET, and Twit. Uh, cut the tail end of Tech TV, unfortunately, which I could have seen more. Uh, followed Kevin Rose over to Re Revision 3. Probably found Brian on there. Followed Tom Merritt over from CNET to Twit, and everything just fell together at Twit. Yeah, it seems like a lot of us have a, have a similar thing. I mean, I know a lot of people in the chat room came from Twit, uh, especially mm -hmm. following Tom and Brian and everybody coming over from there. But uh, a lot of us got to Twit through CNET or tech tv or even zd tv or you know any any of those yeah. old stuff so awesome that sounds great um yeah since your name is relatively hard to pronounce i imagine you wanted to come up with a different chat handle <laughs> but what, what are the origins of I'm captain actually, jack 913 i'm actually not that creative so the handle came from the fact that um one night during college about a decade ago uh, my roommates and i were trying to play a game of medal of honor and i was trying to come up with a handle one of my roommates had bottles of uh, Jack Daniels and Captain Morgan sitting out on the counter. So I just mashed the two together, <laughs> and 913 is my birthday. Oh, all right. I was going to say, were the That's other 912 up. Captain Jacks taken? Or... <laughs> <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> Excellent. Well, that's an interesting. You're another September birthday. I'm a September birthday as well. So yeah, go so for a couple weeks. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. So we got another good question for you. If you're stranded on a desert island, you only get three movies to watch for the end of time or until you're rescued. What three movies are those? Three movies. Well, I have to go with, first off, um, Marvel's The Avengers, which was one. so awesome. I saw it twice in the theaters. Oh, yeah. Um, Love The Incredibles. Well, that was a decade ago, so I'd take that. Sure. And then I'm always hearing between either Spaceballs or Robin Hood Men in Tights. Oh, but I have good to pick parodies. One of the in tights. Yeah, yeah, you gotta love the Mel Brooks parodies. They're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, I watched that's... Spaceball so much as a kid. I pretty much memorized the dialogue. Right, <laughs> they've on gone VHS. Blast. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that that is a tough decision between Men in Tights or, or Spaceballs. If you could only pick one, I'm not sure I could because I've got both of them on the on the media server. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's awesome. Yeah, my wife loves uh, Men in Tights. Yeah, yeah, man, it's, I love the opening too. It's like, why is this place always getting burned down whenever they want to make a Robin Hood movie? <laughs> <laughs> it's just so it just breaks so much of the fourth wall. It's so great. It's way Brooks is he's a funny oh, yeah. guy. Oh yeah. Um, so we got another good one. What's uh, if you're given a superpower or you gain one or you're bitten by a radioactive superpower giver? Um, <laughs> what superpower is it? And what's the first thing you do? Well, since my day job is a first-tier tech support, and the majority of the people I talk to are wicked far away from me, I'd go with teleportation. That's a good one. So if, instead of having to talk to them, you just go over there and either fix their stuff or smack them upside the head for being <laughs> stupid. <laughs> yeah. That's, was... But probably the first thing I would do with it is probably family tech support. Oh, yeah. Since I families all my family's back in massachusetts and just so much easier oh yeah my family is the other way on the on the west coast so it's the same problem though if i ever need to help them with anything it's i can't really do this over the phone because you don't know enough for me to tell you, <laughs> you know? so that's why i set up a vpn server at my parents house so i can just get right in oh yeah see that's that's a good way to do it I, i've set most of my family up with uh chrome remote desktop so i can just remote in get it done show them how to do it and most of the time like like my mom she's really good about learning stuff but she can't be told it i have to she has to be shown um which is fine that's the way i usually learn too i just i can't hear how to do yeah. it and then just know 
uh, so so being able to show her over uh, over remote desktop is super helpful for that kind of thing. Yeah, I'm pretty much like that too. Either right. learning or showing. No, oh, yeah, exactly. So what uh, what games are you currently playing? You playing any board games with the family, or just wasting all your time on video games, or? No, nah, most recently it's just been Angry Birds and Two Dots on my two eye devices. <laughs> nice. Uh, been playing against Andrew Mays on two two dots, and he's so much better at it than me. Now th this isn't dots; they're just dots. It's called two dots. Two dots, yes. Hmm, I don't think I've played that one. I played dots before, which is the like you make squares, but yeah, you make squares on this too. Hmm. I I don't think I ever played the original. I just probably grabbed the second one. Oh, okay. oh, it's a sequel. Okay, and my videos froze. I think so. Excellent. But that's okay. Keep going. You get to deal with frozen video. Uh, this way I can flip off the camera and nobody can see me. So. <laughs> uh, anyway, so if the another really telling question that I love to ask is the, the planet one. If you could move to any planet, real or fictional, what would it be and what would your house look like? I'm not sure on any name of a specific planet, but... From living in the Northeast and the Midwest for 30 years, I'm done with snow. I'd like to go somewhere that is nice, like pleasant, no snow. Not Tatooine or anything like that, but something really pleasant, just no snow. What's the, uh, um, what's the next generation uh, uh, planet? Um, Ryza, the, the beach planet. The, the... Do you ever watch Star Trek Next Generation? I've seen, all, I've seen pretty much all of that. I'm just trying to think of Ryza. I think that's the name of it. Which episode that was? It's it's in a. Or they're always was talking that one about where it at least. Picard was involved with something. Yeah, where where Picard did the uh, the Indiana Jones thing with the the girl that was on the planet and like because everybody on the planet's basically trying to have sex with you and uh, it's like a beach planet and everything. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go back and look sometime. I can't remember. Yeah. Offhand. No, that's I, I I'd be the same way because I'm I'm so sick of snow. I'm originally from Southern California, so. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Love selling California. It's just damn expensive to live there. Hmm. But, yeah, especially after the blizzards in Boston in 2011. That was just too much. Oh, yeah. Well, this last year in Wisconsin has been really cold. I'm sure you guys get it down in Illinois, too. It's been really, really cold this last winter. And it, and it didn't warm oh, up for us God, until, like, June. so cold last January. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. Like, it seriously didn't get above, like, 40 degrees until pretty much June here. It was just crazy. I hated it so bad. <laughs> but. <laughs> I took a screenshot on my phone one day when the high was negative. I'm sure you had a few of those days. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was just insane. Yeah. And and this summer <laughs> hasn't even been that warm either. It, it's hardly even got up to 90 more than a couple days this whole summer. Which I'm sure Travis down in Texas is <laughs> just cursing us for because they're like 120 degrees. I think I might as well live in Phoenix at that point. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, it's going to be wicked warm here in the next few days. So finally summer showed up right at the end of August. Yeah, right. Exactly. We well, wrote uh, in your uh, in your pre-interview form that you, you had met Brian Brushwood once before. Tell, tell us about the, the meeting or lunch or whatever you guys had. Yeah, um, it was the end of April, I believe. He was up in the uh, Chicagoland area for um, a corporate show. I just happened to notice when he posted a picture on, I think it was probably Facebook and Twitter, of a sign at Midway Airport. So I was like, dude, are you really here? He was like, yeah, I'm in the, um, I think Wheeling or Wheeler, Illinois, which isn't that far from me. Oh yeah. So I was like, oh, I, I, great to. Uh, it would be great if I can go by and see you. Um, he's like, and once the show was over, I met up with them. Um, basically, just followed him around for a few hours. Had some dinner with him, and I think he was there with Dan Martin. Oh, nice. I had to hung out for a little for, for a few hours until the wee hours. That's just because it was cool. so late by the time I was able to get up to see him. Yeah. No, that's. But he was an awesome guy. He paid for the entire dinner. Wow, really? <laughs> white people <Yeah>. rich. White people. <laughs> <laughs> white people rich. <laughs> Buying people dinner off in Atlanta. Uh, no, not uh, not Atlanta. Damn, Illinois it doesn't rhyme with dinner. But whatever. <laughs> it's not like it was a real expensive place, but 
he didn't have to, I would have paid for myself. Oh, but sure. That was real nice of him. I was not expecting that. Yeah. Got a few pictures of them. He gave me a copy of the Scam School book for free. Oh, that's really awesome. Yeah, I need to... <laughs> he just recruited me into uh, helping him clean up his stage show a little bit. Oh, there you go. I'd do that for dinner. That's fine. That's right? no problem. I'll do anything for Brian. <laughs> yeah. I, I need to... We need to figure out a meetup for us Midwest people because it's always somewhere where I can't really get to. And since I work a day job, I can't, you know, it's hard for me to take a weekend off to drive very far because I'd have to drive back and, you know, it just takes forever. Right. So I mean, we definitely need to work up a Midwest meetup sometime for the Diamond Club. But, yeah, that'd be great. Oh, yeah. You said you're, uh, speaking of Midwest and stuff, you said you're originally from Boston, but you're now living in Chicago. So how, how did that end up happening? It's all from my wife. Um, I actually met her on the internet in like 97. Ooh, long time ago. Yes, uh, kept up with her. Um, got out here with my dad to see a Cubs game in 99. That's when I first met her in person. Then I started college after that. And this kind of drifted apart until um, 2004. And then my parents are going away for their anniversary for a weekend. So I thought I'd be able to sneak her in and out before they got back. But a hurricane effed up the plan, so they found out. <laughs> but they were fine with it. Oh, there you go. That's awesome. My parents love her. Oh, that's always helpful. <laughs> yeah. So you also but, said... Uh, that... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, yeah, um, proposed in 2010, because uh, I got here in 2011. It was either I, she moved to Boston or I moved to Chicago. But it was more of a pain in the ass with her job being a pharmacist to get relicensed in Massachusetts and all that. Oh, yeah. It's just easier for me to come out here. And then do you end up doing tech support that, from the phone? Or? Yeah. Which is what I was getting to. Oh. Um, the job I had in Massachusetts has sales offices out here in the Midwest. Um, they didn't want me to actually do my job out here at first since they'd already had a remote guy in Ohio somewhere. Mm. Uh, was working for us and then he left IT and went to do sales I think they did not want me to do the same thing oh yeah but I did ask them they said no I was like okay I resign sorry bye and then three months later they call me and offer me my job back <laughs> that's awesome no, that's very cool. So, so you said you're a tech support person or a frontline tech support. What's your, your favorite or least favorite uh, tech support call that you've had over the years? Uh, I hate, really hate dealing with the accent of people. Southern California, at least one guy in Southern California and the Miami area. They're just so hard to understand. Really? I didn't. I never thought yeah. that uh, Southern California had that much of an accent. It's not, It's one specific guy. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I I think it's an Arab accent, but I'm not really sure. Oh, all right. Yeah, I'm not I'm not going to say the guy's name on air. That's no, that, that's not. not necessary. But yeah, it can oh, it can be difficult dealing with the, with accents over the phone. It's it's just hard, the, you know. The, the real pain in the ass is the third party company we got managing our VPN for us, the corporate VPN. Most of them are Indian. Oh. So when you have to they call got tech support, really sec accents. I hate calling them. Right. Oh. I got the number for the uh, American tax, and I try to call her whenever possible. There you go. That's that's the way to do it. <laughs> you got to find the right person. Uh, yeah, that's. I, I used to do um, <clears throat> inbound call center. So like you, you'd see a phone number come up on an infomercial, and and then that's who you know they would uh, you pick up the phone. You know, like that's who who you'd call would be us. And and I was actually there as their. Um, I wasn't really a tech support guy, but I, I helped build the network uh, that set up all their computers. And of course, I still worked for the company. So when I wasn't busy on the network stuff, I'd help on calls and stuff like that. And yeah, it would just be so hard to get people with like thick, thick accents or people from from the South, like Louisiana and stuff that like are like Creole people that it's like, oh, man, dude, I don't understand a word you're saying. <laughs> like, are those even words? <laughs> I, I used to deal with people from Louisiana, but my company eventually moved out of that area. But we're still in the deep South. Oh, yeah. So, so I still get those Southerners like, dude, what the hell? <laughs> don't get me wrong, South uh, people. I love you. I just can't understand what the hell you're saying. <laughs> also, listen to the words that are coming out of my mouth. I'm not trying to be complicated here. <laughs> right. 
especially since I'm relying on every one of these offices to be my remote hands. Oh, exactly. Because you're basically just doing everything over the phone, and you can't force them to really do something. Oh, that's crazy. And the ass just get them to get rid of their XP machines. No oh, God. <laughs> that's still... eventually going away. We're, we're pulling the plug on that soon, so eventually those machines are going to stop. Yeah, I was going to say, you, you continued supporting XP after uh, after Microsoft even did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just a matter of getting replacements out. and We got supported hardware. We'll put Windows 7 on, but yeah. I'm just waiting on people to tell me what I need to do since I'm not with the hardware guys. I'm all by myself. Oh, yeah. Well, that's mm-hmm. awesome. Got my own nice little office, though. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> So do you got a uh, you got anything to plug? Just uh, your Twitter, which is at Captain Jack nine one three. You got anything else uh, you're working on lately, or? Nah, just my Twitter at this point. Even though I don't really post all that much. All right, excellent. Well, it's been great having you on. Thank you very much for joining me. Um, we're oh, gonna... Thank you for having me. Oh, of course. Fun. I'm gonna try to uh, play this song again for the outro, but it's being stupid. So. I'm going to try to play it from the from my tablet here. So anyway, <laughs> once again, thank you very, very much for joining me. And uh, join us uh-huh. again for the next Diamond Dialogue. We usually record on Saturday afternoons. And uh, you can catch all this stuff after the fact at tinvec.com slash DD. That's double D. So, and on that <laughs> note. Oh, yeah, you can't see me dancing. <laughs> <laughs> My own crappy dance for you.